Farewell, good thief, he said. I go now to the halls of waiting to sit beside my fathers until the world is renewed. Since I leave now all gold and silver and go where it is of little worth, I wish to part in friendship from you. Hail and well met, my friends. I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are going to talk about what happened to the members of Thorn's company after the events of The Hobbit. I hope this episode answers a few questions and that you all enjoy it. Let's delve right into it. We must first start with honorable mentions to some of the heroes of the Battle of the Five Armies. Thorn Oakenshield and his nephews Feely and Keely. Thorn led his company during the battle, issuing forth from the halls of Erebor, and providing vital aid to the Free Peoples when he did. During the battle, Thorn was mortally wounded, but was saved from his enemies by his two nephews, as they fell defending their king. Eventually, Beorn saved the dwarf from his ruin upon the battlefield, and he carried Thorn to safety. Upon his deathbed, Thorn made peace with Bilbo after his harsh and prideful words at the Gate of Erebor, and he departed from the Hobbit in friendship, ere he passed into the halls of his fathers. Thorn was 195 when he passed away. Feely was 82 and Keely was 77, as the two were young for dwarves. Let's look next at the Hobbit Bilbo and his mentor Gandalf, both of whom would play roles in the events of the Lord of the Rings. After the events of the Hobbit, the two would journey back to Rivendell and the Shire, and Balin would soon after visit Bilbo, as the two were good friends. Bilbo would bring back some treasures from his journey with Thorn's company, and he would live in peace and wealth in Bag End for some time, before leaving the ring and his home to his nephew Frodo and retiring in Rivendell in 3001 of the Third Age. Bilbo would catch up to his age without the presence of the One Ring, and he would provide wisdom and items for Frodo during and after the quest of the Ring. In 3021 of the Third Age, Bilbo would journey from Rivendell to the Grey Havens, and he would take the elven ship into the west. Gandalf, on the other hand, would go on to continue performing his wizardly duties after the quest of Erebor, keeping a watch upon Middle-earth and helping the Free Peoples. He would attend Bilbo's birthday and departure from the Shire, and he would go on to find out more about Bilbo's ring before joining the Fellowship during the War of the Ring. And with Bilbo, Gandalf would journey into the West. Bilbo was 131, and Gandalf was likely over 11,000 years old when they were last seen in Middle-earth. Now let's get to the heart of this video. What about the ten other dwarves? Well, each of them would play a role in the waning years of the Age. Let's start with those who journeyed into Moria in 2989 of the Third Age. Even though King Dane Ironfoot counseled against the expedition into Moria, Balin went anyway with some other dwarves, seeking to reclaim their lost halls and Thror's Ring, one of the seven dwarven rings of power, which had unknowingly been lost to Sauron years before. Two other members of the group were Oin and Ori, who had also been members of Thorin's company. The full group of dwarves departed from Erebor, and they entered Moria from the eastern side after a short battle that ended in their favor, likely bolstering their overconfidence. The company established a camp in the 21st Hall, and near it, in the chamber of Mazarbul, Balin set up a throne and proclaimed himself the Lord of Moria. His reign would see a good five years for the colony in khazad as the dwarves found many old treasures. However, on the 10th of November in 2994, Balin went to look in the Lake Miromir in the Dimril Dale, but he was felled by an orc archer. His body was placed in the chamber of Mazarbul. It was the first true sign of what was to come, and his tomb was a reminder of the broken hopes of that company. After Balin's fall, more orcs moved into Moria from the eastern side, blocking the east path where the dwarves had entered Moria. So Oin led a group to scout the western gate, but the waters outside of them were up to the door and the Watcher in the Water slew Oin, and only four dwarves were able to escape and return to the others in Moria. As the dwarves were trapped in Moria, they were picked off, and they made their final stand in the chamber of Mazarbul. Ori was among them, and he wrote the final account in the Book of Mazarbul, before being slain alongside his kin by the wretched orcs. The final account in the book was, quote, We cannot get out. The end comes. Drums drums in the deep. They are coming." End quote. Thus, Balin, Oin, and Ori 
alongside other dwarves, were all brought to sorrowful ends due to this expedition. Balin was 231, Oin was 220, and Ori was somewhere between 186 and 231 when the three of them passed away. Now let's look at some happier epilogues for some other dwarves. These seven dwarves, Gloin, Dwalin, Dori, Nori, Biffer, Boffer, and Bomber, all continued to live at Erebor after the events of The Hobbit, and they were all still alive during the War of the Ring. Gloin would go with Gimli as a representative of Erebor to Rivendell for the Council of Elrond, hoping to learn something more of the fate of Balin's expedition into Moria. Gloin would tell Frodo much about Erebor, its inhabitants, and nearby lands during a feast in Rivendell. And during the council, he would relay information about the danger that his people were in. And Gloin would also mention the dark messenger from Mordor that came to Erebor, asking after Bilbo. Gloin's son Gimli would afterwards join the Fellowship of the Ring, and Gloin would likely fight in the Battle of Dale during the War of the Ring. He would live on until the year 15 of the Fourth Age in Erebor, passing at the age of 253. Dwalin would be another dwarf to live out the rest of his years in Erebor, serving King Dane Ironfoot. He would also likely fight in the Battle of Dale, and he would be respected for the rest of his days for his many courageous actions. He would likely serve Erebor in a renowned position. Dwalin, in fact, would outlive the other members of Thorin's company, as he would live to be 340 years old, and he would pass away in 91 of the Fourth Age which is exceedingly long, even for dwarves whose lifespans average at 250 years. That's pretty insane. Good job, Dwalin. As for the rest of the dwarves, Dori, Nori, Bifferboffer, and Bomber, they would all live on in Erebor after the events of The Hobbit, likely serving King Dane and his son, King Thorn Stonehelm, in positions of merit. We don't know these characters' birthdays or death dates, but I'd imagine that they would all participate in the Battle of Dale, except for Bomber, who according to Gloin, was in fact so large that he required six young dwarves to help him move from place to place. So, he probably just gave moral support from inside Erebor during the Battle of Dale. But I would imagine that all of them lived on into the Fourth Age. We can only guess at their ages, though, as these dwarves were neither the oldest nor the youngest in Thorn's company, making them anywhere between 132 to 178 during the events of The Hobbit. Ori fits in this category as well, which is why his exact age at his passing in Moria is unknown. However, assuming Dori, Nori, Biffer, Boffer, and Bomber all survived into the Fourth Age, which theoretically would have been the year 3022 of the Third Age, we can calculate that all of these dwarves were at least 213 or older by the time they all passed away, at least with what I have found. And they all would have passed away before Dwalin did, in the year 91 of the Fourth Age, as he was the longest surviving dwarf of the company. Thus, these are the epilogues of Thorin's company, the heroes who reclaimed Erebor. All of them would be legends after the journey, living in splendor, especially those who remained in Erebor, and they would all of them be forever remembered as heroes, even after their diminishments. From the epilogues of Thorn's company, we see that heroism and virtue aren't things that must fade away, even when we pass the most renowned moments in our lives. But we should also remember to settle, instead of seeking more needlessly dangerous adventures, such as Balin did. For, if he had waited, perhaps Balin's company or their descendants could have joined King Thorin III's son, Durin VII, in truly reclaiming khazad Doom during the Fourth Age, as he did. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this video with a friend. I hope I was able to answer any questions you all had about Thorn's company and what happened to them, as this is all I could find. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments, and also let me know your thoughts about these heroes as well. To contact me more directly, please join us on Facebook and Twitter, and if you'd like to directly support the channel, please consider donating to us on Patreon. Just a dollar a month unlocks more content. Links for all of those are in the description. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today, and I will see you all again next week with a video on the Dwarven Rings of Power and what they did. I've got some exciting things coming up for the channel in the next few weeks, and one of them is going to be another live stream. It will take place on August 15th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so hopefully some of you who weren't able to make the last live stream can join us this time. 
I will also be doing a giveaway of a commemorative Men of the West coin during that livestream that was made by a fellow YouTuber and a friend of the channel. I'll link his channel and the video of him casting the coin in the description. As always guys, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my friends.